Hello, Brian McCarthy here from Bold and Break. Delighted to be doing a tutorial. It's been a scatty year. Sorry, not been posting content as regularly. But as you can see, my bookcase is missing. I'm in the middle of moving. Try not to guilt me too much. Um, anyway, without further ado, we are going to be creating something like this today. Please remember to like and subscribe. It's really important. It helps the channel out. Um, you know, if I don't pulse for a while, YouTube kind of hammers me within the algorithm. So it really helps out the channel and encourages me to keep making content. Also, check out the Boulder Break store. There's some really cool working files and material packs on there for reasonable price. This is a cool one. We are going to be combining an array of techniques, redshift, uh, missions, we're going to be doing the text spline, text object, and the mole spline. And it's going to be a really fun one where you get kind of a retro looking piece of text and you can animate it. So without further ado, let's bring in our text object here. Select your text object. Select the objects panel here. Change this to lights. I'm going to make it all caps. So we get an even distribution of height on the tech. We're going to change the font to this one, owner's black. And um, it's chunky and you know it'll have a nice curve to it. Which brings me to my next bit, which is the caps panel. First off, go to display and turn on shading with lines so you can see the topology of this text object. Put the rounded maybe to three there. Um, and you can up the subdivision here. Um, to give it more curvature if you see fit. But we just want that curve on the edge um, and you'll see why. So the light catches it and you'll get a nice reflection or shimmer. Okay, we're going to put the depth of text to 200. I know, massive. Bring in another text object, but this time it's going to be the text spline. And we are going to do the exact same lights copy that over. I'm going to use the exact same font. Owner's black. And if we turn off that, we can see our font here. We then want to bring in a mold spline object. Have your mold spline object selected um, and in the objects panel, change the mode to spline. You can then go to the spline panel, bring in your text spline here as the source spline and you have a mold spline working for you. You can see the corners of your mole spline are a bit, bit deformed. You do not want that. So select your text spline, go into interpolation and put it as subdivided. We then want to press shift C, bring in a cloner object and we want to clone our mole spline. Select your cloner object, change it to linear, bring your Y value to zero, bring your Z value to 10 and maybe bring your count to 10. Bring back in your text object and maybe double that count to 20 and you will have covered each space nice and evenly, maybe 21, just to bring right at the end there. You can now style this in a really, really cool way. How do we do that? So first thing we wanna do is bring in our Redshift render view. Turn on your renderer. Uh, we cannot see our mold spline. Why is this? We need to right click on our mold spline, go to render tags, select your RS object tag, which is the retric object. Go to mode and change that to cylinder. And you will now see your splines are appearing. Okay, let's create a material and we will create an emissions material here. Materials, and we will use an incandescent material. That means the material emits light itself. We're going to put that onto our mold spline um, and it's not going to do much, but we are also going to add a glass material to the text object. We are going to use the Bold and Break materials pack, which you can buy on the Bold and Break store. See link below or in description. I have a glass materials pack. If you're interested in that, please go have a look. And we're going to use the dispersed glass material here. I'm going to play with this. So we're going to make this a bit stylized. You can see here it's already looking kind of cool. You get these reflections and um, within the glass, but we want a bit more dispersion. So we're going to open up this panel. We're going to actually get rid of this ramp here. Um, and the glass is now a little bit cleaner. 
Let's dock this so we can see what we're doing. We are going to select our standard material, scroll down to dispersion, and we're going to bring this value down to one. So the lower this value is, the more dispersion you kind of get. So bring it down to one. Also, just be aware the more dispersion you do, the maybe higher your render time is. So we're getting a lot of dispersion there. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to play with the index of refraction. 1.5 is your standard for glass, but this is more stylized look. So we really want to kind of mess with how the reflectivity and refraction works in this. You want to bend the light around to get kind of a stylized look. You can see here you get really cool different looks depending on the value. I would play with this as if it's not a physical item and um, for the preview you saw I was around 1.2 1.1 get really nice dispersion in the glass really nice bending of light which you can see here and this is looking really cool play with the roughness here or you can take this off and we can bring that up and you get a different look altogether with that but I'm going to keep it on for now now the next thing we want to do and we might come back to this is we want to play with our incandescent material we have an emissions pack on the Bolderberg store which you have 25 emissive materials all designed in detail and procedural go have a look at that um, link below or link in the description and um, remember to have a check at that so let's turn it off for now and let's use just a base incandescent material and we're going to look at this here very cool first we need to bring up the intensity multiplier let's bring that up to 50 and let's bring in our pulsed effect so we can actually start to see some of this glow that is happening so let's turn on bloom and bring down the threshold for that and you'll start to see some of that and bring in that flare but streak you can see some of that as well if you bring down the threshold of that okay let's start playing with our incandescent material so select your incandescent material here turn up the intensity multiplier to 50 that is kind of like the intensity you give to a light maybe not 50 for now bring it to 25 and turn on your bloom and you can already see you're getting a big glow. Maybe bring that down to 10. Um, there are loads of ways to use incandescent material. Um, and, but we're looking at the most simplistic way right now. Maybe bring the bloom intensity down to 0.5 and turn on streak. Remember, the brighter your color, the more it's going to wash out the scene. So we are going to change the color of this. We want to bring in a vertex attribute node. What that does is it's going to target physical spaces within your scene it's geometry and points of data like vertices in your scene which is a really really handy node and it prevents any uv mapping and keeps everything nice and procedural we're going to bring in a ramp and we're going to bring in a nice rainbow gradient but we are going to make sure it's stepped so let's look for our rainbow gradient let's use this we're going to select all our knots here i held shift at the first knot and selected the last knot and we're going to change the interpolation to linear then we are going to bring our out color of our vertex map into the alt port of the ramp we're then going to bring our ramp into the illumination color now you're not seeing anything yet which is absolutely fine because you're not meant to but we are going to select our vertex attribute node go to presence and we are going to select curve id color that is going to allow redshift to place a different ramp on each most line that you've created within the cloner and that is very cool and look at that you get this just blast of color refraction and dispersion all on this glass node which is very cool we can now maybe bring our bloom intensity up a little bit and bring our incandescent intensity up maybe 25 and you can see there you're getting more of that saturated color which is really nice bring it up to 50. within your mole spline there is a plethora of things you can do to make this even cooler you can animate your spline here so if we went to animate that that is very cool so what i like about this is as you animate this on so bring this down as you start here zoom in to your dispersed glass material and you get these really cool close-ups of ref refraction going on between the geometry in the scene which is quite nice and it adds a kind of a retro look to the whole thing which i love so you know you can animate that on really nicely 
You can put in some effectors here if you want to displace, or you could even put in a force. This is the beauty of the Mole Spline. It's a very versatile tool, probably underutilized and underrated. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, please, please remember to like, subscribe, all those good things. Leave a comment below. Check out the Bold and Break store. Thank you for watching and goodbye.